Welcome to TC Golden Media, and tonight we bring you a compelling story from the heart of Nigeria's Senate. It's a tale of determination, resilience, and a vision for a brighter economic future. Our story begins with a Nigerian senator who's not only making waves in the legislative arena, but also balancing her roles as a mother and wife, while championing a cause that could reshape Nigeria's economy. But has he been, been a senator of the Federal Republic? Oh, it's been quite interesting. It was everything I expected. I've been busy legislating, um, oversighting, and representing my people. And I've also been able to strike a balance with my home. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Still cook. As a mother, I, as I, a wife, and uh, all yeah, that. Yeah, I still cook. I still do everything. So striking a balance, that's what matters more to me. But I'm glad that my people are happy so far. And I've been able to uh, lend ropes quickly uh, in the Senate. And um, yeah, I've had my debate for my for a very first bill. Last That's week. good. It's interesting. It's it golden. Is. During a banking committee meeting in February, she asked a simple yet profound question to the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission. What is the status of Nigeria's gold reserves? The answer was shocking. The Central Bank of Nigeria last purchased a gold bar in the 1960s. Uh, the idea for the to sponsor the gold bill came up in February at a committee, the banking committee, of which I'm a member of, uh, we were screening the CBN Monetary Policy Committee. And there sat the DGSEC, which is Lamido Yuguda. And I asked him a question. If you become a part of the CBN Monetary uh, Policy Committee, how do you intend to boost Nigeria's gold reserve? And do you mind letting us know exactly what the status of the gold reserve is? And his response shocked me, as it did shock the other members of the committee. He said that indeed the CBN did have a gold reserve, but the last time Nigeria CBN bought a gold bar was in the 1960s. And I thought, wait, since the 1960s. 1960s was when the CBN bought a gold bar. That means the last time the Nigerian Central Bank took stock of a gold bar in its reserve was in the 1960s. Imagine that, Tochuku, since the 1960s. This revelation sparked her mission to explore Nigeria's gold potential. She remembered those school atlases from childhood showing Nigeria's rich natural resources. Why, she wondered, does Nigeria lack renowned gold refineries and processing zones? And then that now led me to begin to research. I was like, okay, I remember when we were in primary school, we all had this atlas, you know, where we saw the pyramids, granite pyramids up north, we see the cotton, and I remember gold in Elisha. And I was like, if we had gold all this while, then why don't we have renowned gold refineries, gold processing zones, and then having them bullioned and Nigeria's own share been preserved in the central bank. I mean, that will bring about economic stability. It will bring about, um, apart from the job generation, the foreign direct investment it will project. And, you know, it will bring a lot of cushions, especially right now that our uh, currency is weakening. The senator realized that developing Nigeria's gold industry could bring economic stability, create jobs, and attract foreign investment. With the Naira weakening, it became clear that exploiting and marketing Nigeria's gold was not just an option, but a necessity. So I thought, you know, we, we can't get our gold exploited, explored, and uh, marketed to the very advantage of Nigerians. And of course, as where, where we, we can get our CBN begin to yearly uh, announce how much we have in our gold reserves and we can begin to trade with them and we've seen countries that actually enter into um, foreign investments in trading the, with trading oh, their gold so i think we i thought about that and i spoke mm. to members of the committee i began to network but this path was fraught with challenges she faced opposition from illegal mining interests and international stakeholders some warned her about the dangers suggesting that powerful entities thrive on the chaos and uncertainty in Nigeria's mining sector. But she was undeterred, supported by her husband and driven by a vision for Nigeria's future. I was also told that it was such a dangerous um, bill to pass, considering certain interests with regards to the illegal mining. And um, 
Uh, and I, could, I was also made aware that there could be some international forces that would frown at that because, you know, wherever there is chaos and uh, uncertainty in Nigeria, there are certain people that benefit, benefit from, from that. So I took time. I spoke to uh, my husband because I had to let him know that, OK, there's some murky waters that I would step on. I, I, I would get to swim in. But um, I made him understand the importance and um, he told me, OK, go ahead. In her passionate speeches, she highlighted the human cost of unregulated mining. Lives were being lost, communities displaced. Establishing mining standards, she argued, would save lives and unlock the true value of gold for local communities. The first I will say this is that the lives that have been lost because there are no mining regulations. About a few weeks ago, 30 miners were trapped in an avalanche, should I say, in Niger State. Once this, uh, I think the greatest loss is the lives that have been killed or the people that have been buried in submerged mines. That happens because we have not set standards as to mine. So these illegal miners, they go into these holes and keep digging, 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 and they paid peanuts for that. They don't even understand. Economically, the benefits were undeniable. Developing a legitimate gold industry could reduce Nigeria's reliance on oil and stabilize its currency. She pointed out that even countries without gold reserves are actively increasing theirs, often buying gold from nations like Nigeria, which sells it illegally at a loss. These communities that have gold don't even understand the true value of what they have. Because some of our communities and states are so blessed that at every rainfall, down uh, rainfall, we see gold, the ground shines. And um, I would say the greatest loss that our country encounters is with regards to the loss of lives because of the encouragement of these illegal miners. And the second one I talk about is the various community clashes. We've seen several communities displaced. People systematically create chaos in communities that are blessed with minerals. And all of this happens because, again, there are no regulations. And the monetary part of it we talk about is the currency stability. Every time we, we, our dollar, our naira almost got to 2,000 to a dollar. Now imagine if we had, over time, developed our gold reserve by deploying the very best international practices in gold, you know what would have been? We're not just relying alone or relying on, on, on oil. And so that's what, even in America, UK, France, Germany, countries that don't even have gold are increasing their gold reserves. And you ask a question, where do they buy their gold from? Invariably, you can connect the dots. Yeah. While one country that has a lot of gold sells it illegally for close to nothing at a loss, and other countries that even though they don't trade in gold, but they are constantly developing and building their gold reserves for future sake. Through perseverance and a clear vision, the senator championed the gold bill. Her story is a testament to the power of regulation, economic foresight, and the potential of untapped resources to transform a nation. Indeed, this is not just a legislative effort. It's a narrative of hope and transformation for Nigeria. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories right here on TC Golden Media.